Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dan Hussey with Zaner Ag Hedge, bringing you this week's Strategy of the Week update here for 6.30, June 30th, 2022. Remember, trading futures involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. And everything I talk about here today is just my own opinion and not a direct trade recommendation. But uh, if you are looking to turn stuff into recommendations, talk uh, a little bit you know, in more detail about what we can offer over here at Zaner and what I can do for you as a broker, 312-277-0110. Find me on Twitter, Facebook, or shoot me an email, dhussey at zaner.com. I uh, love taking the conversation beyond these webinars and these videos and outside of social media to personalize it for what you might need. All right. Today, we had a big day for data, uh, particularly for the USDA, right? We had uh, pretty disappointing export numbers. In fact, uh, the lowest of the marketing year for both corn and beans with cancellations and a loss of exports out of the soybeans this morning with Pakistan and uh, I forget the other country having canceled uh, some exports, basically flash sales they had uh, they had uh, gotten on the books prior to today uh, and then walking back on those, um, walking back on those uh, numbers here this week. Um, a little bit and canceling those orders a little disappointing but certainly not the reason we're down today and price action is what it is and the row crops uh kind of talked about this um you know last um uh last video that uh, you know was a little concerned that you know we might top out and find a high into some form of price certainly a bottom could be forming but um you know from a seasonal standpoint it it makes a lot of sense if from the seasonals to be selling off at this point. Yes, I agree that we don't have balance sheets and necessarily acres that justify a massive fundamental sell-off, but uh, you know, a darn near billion bushel uh, number here from the USDA for soybean ending stocks. Acres were um, blah, you know, okay. Uh, and you got to wonder about some of these numbers uh, sometimes when they come out and you know, how much of it is it government doing what government does best, which is, um, you know, kind of throw spaghetti at the wall until it sticks. Um, all that aside, let's not deny what the charts are saying. And we're going to go over that here today. We pretty much have risk off uh, happening everywhere, right? Every market was pretty much red today with the exception of bonds. Bonds rallying is a risk off effect. Uh, even in the face of a uh, potential three, uh, 75 basis point hike here um, out of the next Fed report. At least that's what lots of analysts are calling for. The way the bonds are trading, I would not agree with that assessment. Uh, and I'm in the camp that if the Fed does too much to try to curb inflation here, they're going to end up walking themselves into a corner um, right about the time a recession hits and quantitative easing and other you know facilities might have to come back um, because they overshot you know their inflation um the, the 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 interest rate hikes uh, to try to curb inflation. Now it's been interesting over the last week. You know, let's put put the conspiracy theory hat on a little bit here. It's been interesting to see that over the last couple of weeks we've seen EIA stockpile uh, announcements delayed. We're going to see the EIA just announced today that we'll see their uh, their diesel demand uh, report here delayed as well. Those types of things, delaying reports that sell us stockpiles of demand at a time when inflation has been rampant and running, um, to me suggests that we're seeing government, in, you know, government um, entities trying to do what they can, maybe even being political about it, uh, and to try to curb inflation. I mean, the, we know the Fed outright does it, but do the USDA, do the EIA, are they trying to curb inflation by? Um, you know, delaying data or in the instance of the, you know, USDA today, a great way of politicizing these numbers to help food inflation, you know, kind of come down um, and grain prices come down is to kind of stock those, uh, stack those uh, grain stock numbers. I think a 4.35 million bushel uh, number for the corn, which was released today, up 6% um, for the quarterly grain stocks. That number doesn't necessarily reflect a bullish corn um corn number. That's a significant carry out. You know, if we were down in the two to three, uh, sub three, down the one to two, that's tight corn. Um, 4.35 billion bushels is kind of, kind of tight, but it's honestly, um, it, I'd say if you go back historically, it's still, um, you know, it's not as much as I'm sure we'd like to have to say food security is, is there, but it's not as tight as it could be or as tight as we've seen. 971 million, uh, rolled over there for the beans that is a little bit higher than um 
I know certainly than I anticipated the number to be coming out, but that's also the quickest way to try to throw a wet blanket on this market's rally um, by telling us we had a little bit more left over there uh, than we thought. Uh, and certainly, you know, soybeans are in no place to be trading a weather market just yet. We don't have the weather to even be trading weather markets just yet. But soybeans, you know, until we get into the dog days of August, um, still have plenty of time to recover uh, so long as we don't kill the plant outright. Uh, certainly yield's not going to be great. And I do think we've seen the highest yield numbers out of the USDA out of our prior reports. Um, but uh, the acreage numbers are certainly now uh, at a point where um, they're certainly at a point where now we can start to work with those a little bit more. Corn acres down, for, uh, I think it was down 4%. Either way, 89.9 million acres there for the corn estimate out of the USDA. Uh, 88.3 for the soybeans. Um, okay, so now that those are out of the way, maybe we are now into trading weather markets. And if that's the case, um, over the next couple of weeks, weather doesn't look that bad. It has a way of turning bad, but it also could still remain mild and actually decent. Uh, so long as we keep getting a little bit of a sprinkle and a drink every week or two, um, we'll pull through. And certainly, you know, we want to see those heat, heat indexes, if they ever punch into the 90s, obviously come back down, um, you know, somewhat there. Let's see. Uh, I guess, you know, I'll do a quick little rundown. Um, of weather here for us over the next week, uh, just to give us a look at what I'm referring to here. Here's the ma maximum temperature forecast going through next week. These are the highest temperatures we're going to be expecting in the um, uh, you know five, six to seven days out, eight days out here. You can see how through much of the Midwest, with the exception of Nebraska there and Oklahoma, southern parts of Missouri, um, we're going to still remain, you know, sub 90 for the most part. Um, we definitely had a new drought monitor map come up today that starts spiking a little bit of a drought instance. Um, but, you know, one cold, one cold front that, that comes through, not that there is a big cold front that I think could relieve that just yet coming through, but one coming through could uh, could help here. Uh, and that's what I think the market isn't just totally committed to um, uh, to that idea yet. Prob is that probability of precipitation here, uh, you can see that we do get above 50% probability for precipitation uh, for a few days here throughout the next week. Um, that is certainly keeping things from, I think, getting too crazy in terms of the weather market as well. I mean, of course, no meteorologist here, but this is the chart that I want to actually, the first one I want to pull up is this. This is a high, low altitude wind uh, indicator. Um, this type of swirling uh, effect here throughout the Midwest, this is, you can see Texas here. Um, of course, only some of our... Uh, our river bound um, <laughs> states, you can see outlined, you know, Illinois here, Iowa's over here, right? Missouri, uh, Texas, Oklahoma, um, Kansas, Nebraska. This swirling, a uh, little bit of swirling effect that we get through here, sucking this hot, dry air up out of the Southwest. If this turns into more of a cyclone effect with that suction out of the South, uh, out of the, the uh, Southwest, that's what causes those heat domes uh, to occur. So this is a developing thing we'll continue to watch for. Uh, and the other thing here too is notice how we pull that moisture out from the Gulf. If any moisture comes up for the most part, we either, either comes for the most part down through, uh, this Northern, um, down through this Northern jet stream, uh, or up more than like the like cold front from the Northern jet stream hits the, uh, hot moist air from the South, from the Gulf coming up, creates our weather, uh, weather fronts through the Midwest and where those collide here is where many of those storms form, get pushed, uh, easterly, et cetera, et cetera. Right. I mean, that's just, that's just North American weather 101. Um, what I don't see are any major tropical depressions that are coming up through the Gulf that, you know, could be like a bowling ball to hit the Gulf Coast and bring a substantial amount of rain uh, northbound. We definitely have some that, you know, some depressions here that in some moisture that form that's formulating and cloud cover formulating along the coast. But if you look at what many of our wind maps are doing, um, they're not dragging them up to the uh, main corn belt. It, you know, it at most could get sucked up towards the eastern corn belt. Um, but for the most part here, um, we don't have any major fronts moving through with the exception of the one that just ran through 
uh, on northern plains, which of course is hitting some of our lightest planted acres in the country, right? We needed this front and this rain to be down and solidly down here. And you can see just the tail end of this depression is going to be uh, hitting parts of Iowa. So that's only going to bring scattered rains. There is a front coming through and, you know, must be pulling some moisture up, you know, and this is that suction that's pulling it then towards across the Midwest um, here. Uh, you can see a little bit of that front swirling right here. Um, once that pulls across the Midwest, as you can see forming uh, here, this is the chance of rain that we have in the forecast here into tomorrow. I know here in Illinois and for uh, the foreseeable future. Um, this is massive. So our six to 10 day precipitation outlook here, as of today, we have above normal precipitation and that just is reflection of those couple fronts going through here, uh, through that Western Corn Belt uh, and through Illinois, Missouri and uh, Iowa. Uh, we will get, you know, some, uh, you know, some potential for rain this weekend. Okay, that's great. Um, you can see this very dry, uh, high altitude heat uh, out over uh, Utah, Nevada, uh, as well as this dry, uh, really what has become uh, a de <laughs> which is baking the desert in Texas both of those without uh, you know getting uh, both of these have the, the ability to creep up and become that heat dome over uh, the Midwest the 8 to 14 day outlook here um, you know unfortunately for many of our dryland acres um, well, many of the irrigated acres, I suppose, will will get some get their own drink out here. But more of the story is um, the above the above normal precipitation here for the Eastern Corn Belt, Illinois, Iowa, and parts of you know uh, the northern uh, states. There, it's very light still, right? So we're not uh, this. If this was showing near normal or below normal all over, um, I think we would be putting in more of a floor on the charts at this time. The temperature outlook, however, uh, over the six to 10 day and eight to 14 day is starting to creep up. Um, this has gotten dramatically redder since yesterday uh, and is a good indication that, um, could it, well, it's a good indication to keep watching, right? Because over, our, over the next week or so, I think we're gonna see um, some substantial uh, changes to how the market is trading uh, in these weather effects. But still very hot and dry for the most part that's still the story but it's not as hot and dry as we all want over the last week here the 24-hour precipitation here this is actual rain falling uh you can see um you know this the storm front that has come through denver and will probably pick up through uh, the midwest here they're dropping about an inch to quarter to an inch of rain so if that can really push through you know nebraska push through iowa and through illinois um this front that's over here this one's not going to dip down far enough, but it's certainly bringing a decent drink. Um, if this front can push through, that's the drink of water that the market, I think, is 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 playing into uh, today. So if that all falls apart, that could be uh, another story. All right, so that is way too much on weather. I'm already 12 minutes in, um, but uh, let's start today with corn. Um, just because corn came into today rather bearish, uh, still in a downtrend. Uh, and for the most part, um, corn has been walking back uh, from its contract high, you know, from at least in December, from mid-May uh, versus the beans, which are doing so just uh, much more recently. Uh, December corn, we've had a bearish crossover of that 18-day to 55-day moving average. The 18-day is now being dragged down to that 100-day moving average. And corn prices have already come down to the 100-day move or 200-day moving average here. Um, it's worth noting that a full 50% retracement from the 360 level up to the contract highs is still below us, somewhere in that 550 area. We'll look at that on a chart in a minute. Um, but we are pulling back into the old consolidation levels, um, you know, whether it was from last June through August um, for December corn or uh, this kind of gap up we had on the charts that's arguably been left open at 574. Um, you know, I, I'm thinking $6 is probably going to get tested here, but if we have some panic selling that wants to really drive price down, to fill that gap would be a great place to do so, right into 50% longs and right into the support here from um, from February, March that uh, held and started uh, the last dollar, $2 rally up into contract highs. Um, that doesn't mean we might not see a little bit of a bounce here in the near term, but I think the panic selling that we saw today, uh, closing down 34 cents there in December corn, down 35 and a quarter for September, um, going into a long weekend, end a week, end a quarter, end a month, into a holiday weekend, okay right um we have an open gap above us as well 
up around 729 and we'll be uh, need to really um, watch for that as well daily stochastics we are way oversold we'll probably remain oversold for a few days to a week here just because of how far down we've come uh, and uh, man we've just gone knifed right through the 55 day down to the 200 or 100 day down to the 200 day moving average so um, you know I would not advocate for catching a falling knife you know at this time September corn just about the same look to the chart here so not much else to say there uh, let's hop into the short-term technicals and take a look at what corn ha had done today. We will be looking at energy products, the S&P and bonds and everything here in a little bit, barring I have time. So we're going to try to run through these charts pretty quickly for us. So that four-hour chart, as I mentioned, we've got an open gap up around 730. Uh, it's worth noting that we also have that uh, open gap um, on the daily time frame down around 582 to 578 right here. Uh, the full 50% retracement, as I mentioned before, uh, is actually down around 567. Today we broke, we, you know, we we had come down in this uh, three legs down to this 650 area. That was a 50% retracement of the last swing up, uh, and certainly was the old congestion area that we held as resistance there into February, pulled back in March, broke through it in March. Uh, held it as kind of support here in late March into early April and then ran, uh, you know, continued to run higher. That's all gone on the chart. You know, any hope for the market to uh, have held those levels, they're now, you know, broken now, probably resistance if we get a bounce anywhere. But uh, the way we traded today, uh, I wouldn't be um, betting on it too much, unfortunately. Um, so, uh, again, full 50% retracements from... Uh, Basically, contract lows up through the highs, six or 570. So, if we see any kind of like w uh, panic sell through 580, $6, that open gap right here in the chart, along with that major 50% level, could become um, could be the support we find. But I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't stick my neck out uh, in front of it. On the way down here, and once we went through that open gap, we started holding uh, a series of 50% shorts. Uh, the first one was from basically the uh, gap down to the lows here, we bounced up, we traded 50%, we went down to targets from that high to new lows. Market held the new next to the series is probably more visible on the one hour chart here for us. Okay, there's the next in the series short. Uh, that short kind of uh, actually we started to break down uh, and I would argue we, we, we went into extension shorts at that point, although you know, next to the series from high to low here kind of uh, held in and of itself. Either way, um, it still right still was a market that bounced up into 50 percent, went lower. Uh, there was a 50 percent here that we were holding and I thought kind of broke through, but it didn't matter. We just continued lower. Um, that called up when 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 this 50% from 676 down to lows broke. If you notice, you drew if you drew what we refer to as the ambush long from that new low to the high after, you can notice the ambush long got a reaction and then failed out and we just rolled right on over. Uh, and actually, um, you know, from today pre-market from that new swing high to the low, um, well not pre-market but after you know, the break from that new high down to the pre-report level uh, was a 50% retracement we basically rallied up into. It was 50% for the week, right? That was the high for the week on Tuesday, uh, down to the low for the week at that time. We rallied up to 650. It was a quick 15 cents and reverse lower right back on down to 627 targets and even close below those. So now um, corn's probably in extended shorts or is going to be in a little bit more of a kind of hair on fire sell off. The level I'm using right now is going to be 645 down to lows uh, or, you know, the spike high of the day down to lows. The 250 percent that I would be looking for corn uh, that if we bounce up into to hold its resistance are right in the 632 and 635 area. What's three cents between friends here on a market that's dropping, you know, 30 cents in the day. Uh, and that would take us down towards 610 with, you know, extension potentially down to six dollars. So you want to know how corn gets there. It's by holding these resistance levels. Uh, on the way down, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news that uh, that unfortunately I think the top is in for um, um, top might be in even for August or September corn, but we'll see. Uh, it might it's just going to take that long to get there. So after the report, there was a 50% uh, that kind of got front run. Maybe they were pulling from this high to low. Either way, uh, that went down. 
get rid of my things. That went down to its target. Next in the series, highs to low. Went down to target. Moral of the story is the market was trading pretty technical shorts, right? One step forward, two steps back. One step forward, two steps back. One step forward, two steps back here uh, in the near term. We might see resistance into 624 uh, or even into 626 in the overnight. Uh, and like I said before, you know, if, it, if things become a little more aggressive, like I said earlier, watch for the 630 to 635 area as resistance now. Uh, and again, that would be kind of a move back to the pre-report levels, pulling them as, uh, you know, pulling us back up to uh, old resistance or old support now as resistance before the market, uh, you know, potentially walks back over and heads down to unfortunately $6 at this time. I am con concentrating on old crop uh, now because I think that's just most prudent for all of us. So let's move on to beans or new crop. Excuse me. It's one of those days. It's been, a, we've had a lot of those days recently. All right. New crop beans, terrible looking chart right now. I mean, just absolutely terrible. The only way this could be worse is if we actually closed the day below yesterday's low, and this would be a bearish engulfing candle. And that would be just, you know, we might have like a limit down move after that type of close with this this technical, the rest of the, the, the way this chart looks. I hate to say it. Yes, was the corn, was the soybean number this bearish? No, uh, but that doesn't matter. Markets don't care. Now that it's out of the way, the market's going to do what it wanted to do before. Uh, and um, nevertheless, we still have a big range for uh, November um, this $14 level. We haven't been below it uh, for more than a moment since uh, that little gap up on the chart here back in February. Um, but what I am concerned about is the 50% retracement. And we'll look at it on the smaller time frame chart from this contract high to the low traded, you know, perfectly up into $15 and downside would take us to, you know, the 200 day moving average. That just seems way too technically apparent to not happen at this point. We spiked back up to test the 5,500 day and we're, well, I mean, really specifically the 55 day and 18 day, but we tested all three of those moving averages as resistance and boy, did it hold. Not only were we unable to hold up there, we not, we closed back down below the body of yesterday's candle. Um, <coughs> excuse me, not a good look at all. Um, and, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to sound so bearish, but just, I can't look at this chart and tell you that, uh, we're going higher from right here with the way it looks. Um, it's just, it would just not, it's just not me doing my job, right? Sometimes we have to play devil's advocate. Uh, I still think there's opportunity here though, for anyone that has not done sales for beans, we haven't fallen apart yet. And for crying out loud, while these markets are closed right now, maybe you go and get some cash sales or um, a basis contract locked or something, do something to uh, try to take advantage of this. And I say basis contract, so then you can pull that risk onto the board and there's things like a risk reversal strategy uh, that you can do. I do want to cover that idea right now for everybody. I've looked at these collar strategies before. Uh, and it is a great way of doing uh, and, pr and protecting yourself to the downside, particularly if you've moved that risk to the board. Buying a $14 put um, went out today about 50, 50 cents. So that means a 13.50 break even just buying that put outright. Uh, but we can cut down on that cost uh, today by you know turning around and selling you know a 15.80 call. Um, that's bringing in 40 cents. So for a 10 cent cost, you, you know, we can get a floor in at $14. And if we rally back to contract highs, your first sales here on the board would be at 1580. So, you know, if you've locked your basis, uh, you've moved that risk over to the board at a price of 1458 here today, a uh, dollar thirty, dollar twenty of improvement to the upside with risk only fifty cents below you. That's a great way of still getting some protection on here ahead of whatever selling pressure might come. Because uh, I am very fearful we're going to see a nasty reopen next week, a negative day tomorrow, and with that long holiday, uh, oh man, anything can happen on Monday night's open next week. Um, so just be risk adverse at this point. This is not the time to be gambling, um, particularly when it's with our production. All right, November beans, let's get back there for a second. And actually let's flip on over to our, uh, you know, uh, um, our shorter time frame charts here to take a look at kind of what we were dealing with on a day like today. Um, okay, so we actually had a slight uh, gap here uh, where was it gap here? Um, 
at one point on the charts around 1470. It closed, uh, no big deal. But the real gap is still left open around 1536 above it. Big reason I think that we could still go through to contract highs is this open gap we've left on November beans. But it might take until October to do so, kind of like it did last year. So that's something that we could still go down a dollar from here and then rally four by the time November goes off the board. Uh, there's still plenty of time and price action in front of us. Yes, this is getting close and was a 50% long off the lows. I don't deny that. $14 to 1508 highs. 1454, very interesting place to have been a buyer today. My concern is this type of close after this type of new spike that took us up into a full 50% retracement at 1584 highs to lows doesn't really make me want to be a buyer there when we came back down. I'm fearful we're going to head down to, in the overnight here, if I had to guess, we're going to head down to 1440. Then there might be a bounce you know, up into a 50% level. We could retrace all the way back up to 1470. Uh, but my concern now is that we have a very technical setup and I'm gonna go out to a four hour chart here so you can see that downside target takes you to 15 or 1356. 1356, when we go out to a daily time frame, you can see that's the 50% level from our swing from low to high here. It's also where trend line through uh, for the contract kind of comes in. So very technically visible area. And by the way, we have now six months, set almost seven months worth of stops that have built up below $14 that in my opinion, the market's gonna wanna go down and potentially run. So we'll see, 1366 to $13 uh, is kind of my downside uh, level that I think we're gonna probably get down to in a swing lower. I don't know if it's going to go straight there. There's probably going to be, um, you know, some up and down trend that takes us there. We might bounce. We might go back down to test the level and before we're going higher in a month or so or two months when we get into August, September time frame. Um, but if we consider what we did last year for soybeans around this time, and this is just looking at November this year, what it did last year, here's July right? June, July, we went down, we came up, we went down, we went sideways. Well, we've already done this sideways price action for the first part of the year. So what do we do now, right? If today was a bearish reaction from the market, if the technicals are kind of rolled over and things don't look that great, um, I would love to see us go above contract highs, but um, as of right now, without that weather, super weather effects in, in a high you know, a uh, field on fire type of uh, world right now, I'm not so certain we're gonna see the market pick itself back up without at least another leg lower at this point. I think today we built in uh, enough fear and enough panic selling to potentially take us um, a little bit lower in the near term. So we'll see what happens now. Uh, let's give you some kind of um, price action here from the report uh, after the report here. There was a full 50% retracement uh, off the highs. Um, that got a reaction when we came up to test the 618 line to the tick, but held it. So 50% off the highs traded up into 1486, kind of a three wave structure here, a little choppy. And then the market rolled over. Uh, once it did so, if you draw up now the full 50% short from that new high to the low after, had a new little 50% level, went down to targets. Uh, there's certainly maybe an aggressive little 50% here from 1470 lows to lows. Look for you know the 63 to 65 area as resistance right on the open, but arguably uh, from that high after the report here at 1491-ish down to lows, look for resistance up into the 1473, 1475 area. Uh, and then of course the full 50% short off the highs now from the high to low of the swing, uh, another resistance level there, maybe around 1481. But I don't know, if this market's really gonna go lower, we're probably not gonna go back up that high um, in the process of doing so. All right, so that's corn and beans. Um, I don't have too much to say about wheat. Uh, okay, wheat needed to run the stops at the $9 level. We needed to come down, uh, in my opinion, in wheat to, this is really all I have to say, to kind of test the uh, pre-Ukraine, uh, war in Ukraine level, uh, which we're coming down into now that we're below $9. Um, this, um, this looks like a pretty big topping formation in wheat, but the amount that we've pulled back for September wheat at this point, you know, you go from kind of a liquid contract lows to highs, it's basically a 50% retracement around the $9 mark. So, um, okay, cool. Um, 
um, I'm not concentrating too much on wheat right now um, because the other row crops have my attention. Okay, so moving on to some other outside markets that I think have affected things here too. We have that broader risk off trade going on, um, which is where crude oil and its uh, crazy psychopathic brother Arbob, uh, gasoline, um, it's where those markets are um, really starting to top at this point. I'm going to begin with Arbob, 50% swing from 288 up to the 432 area. We came down to test the 618 line. Uh, the market bounced and tried for a moment there. We were back up into this old range, but then closing below this low here at 355, it's kind of a death toll, um, particularly after the outside day reversals we had had. Arbob had set up in a little bit of a long trend. Then we had an outside day that was positive, right? A higher, a higher high and a lower low. Then the next day we had a higher high and a lower low that was negative and closed below that prior day's low. That's why then we just saw this panic selling fire through that right there was a massive technical um, get the heck out signal for funds and everything else. And the sell off we saw today for another 20 cents lower uh, at its low only closed about 14 cents lower here um, is also maybe signaling, uh, you know, that seasonal high we see in gasoline into the July 4th weekend. So if that's the case, I think we can all take a, you know, deep breath and, and, and I would say that, Hey, I'm no Arbob trader, but if you haven't filled up your tank in a while, maybe wait a week or two. I, I got a hunch prices are going to come down just a little bit after the, uh, what we're seeing going on in this chart, but we'll see what happens. Um, Crude oil trading a 50% level from its 123 high down to the 101 low at 112 has rolled over here. Um, if we go below this trend line against the lows around 100, uh, I think equal legs down one, two, and then three would take us down towards that 86 figure. 618 line of the swing from 62 to 103 is around 88. So the 90 to 85 area would be our next downside you know, target for crude. Uh, and this would also align with this upward sloping trend line. So, um, and not to mention, you know, the old highs here, right? Right around the 85 area uh, that we broke out of uh, and we'd be pulling back the test. So I think there's a pretty good op chance here that uh, this A, B, and now a C leg down towards 85 uh, is underway. Yeah, that's great for prices at the pump. That's great for moving, uh, mo having to move our uh, and ship our grain around. Uh, but it's terrible for, you know, the ethanol and biofuel um, arguments that uh, and might be a good reason that we're seeing the inflation trade unwind a little bit here uh, with just about everything, you know, lower uh, feeder cattle. A little uh, strange day here, but really still inside of its range. Absolutely nothing has changed since, uh, for the last two weeks that we've talked about it. We're still caught in that 50 percent long off the 162 low to the 168 high. 170 support still kind of coming in holding as well as the full 50% short from contract highs down to that 162 low right around 175 caught in a uh, fight over the trend and we're just ping ponging between those levels right now till we break above 178 or below 168 there really isn't much to say about this chart other than this coiling effect so with that I mean I guess you could say that we're probably getting closer to that range breaking than not We'll see what happens, and it's really a watch for me to see. Uh, lean, um, excuse me, uh, the fats here from 141 low to the 129 high. Likewise, we rallied up to the 618 line there at 138.7. From the 129 low to the 137 high, we've come back down to the 618 line twice now. Uh, we do have kind of a, a trend line support for the uh, feeder cattle, and I mentioned. Once we saw two weeks ago, I mentioned once you see the 618 line, 618 line start drawing up these triangle uh, like sloping trend lines against the highs and lows because we're probably going to bounce between them. And sure enough, that's what we are doing. Uh, we are actually finding a range now. So I got a hunch that live cattle uh, could get a move back up to not only their kind of open gap up here around 136, but if we take a look at where our daily um, daily time frame 
moving averages are. We've got a, a big cluster of them. 18 day at 134.70, 55 day up at 136, uh, excuse me, at 135.10, 200 day at 135.30, and uh, the 55 day all the way up there at 136. So reversion back to the mean here might be underway. We are in overbought or oversold stochastics. So uh, a key reversal, if we find you know higher prices tomorrow, uh, we could see ourselves in a little bit of a rally back towards that area. And again, I'm just thinking that this is going to be range bound until it's not. And uh, so far it is. So far we've had 61.8 line, 61.8 line, 61.8 line, 61.8 line, um, just chopping around. And until we, you know, really break above or below kind of trend lines or, you know, the 131 area, the 137 area, we're just going to keep chopping sideways in a range, in my opinion, for our cattle. So both feeders and fats caught in a range there. Uh, and I think we're going to see that continue through. Uh, the 10-year, or in this case, 30-year bond, uh, notes and bonds here, very impressive rally. We are now uh, seven handles off the low for the 30-year bond. Um, that doesn't, to me, suggest that we're going to get another three-quarter basis point hike by the Fed. But what do I know? I'm, uh, I'm not one of the big whales that trades these things. Uh, extension low uh, from low to low here, 138 is the 50% uh, area. Um, you know, there is, you know, arguably another 50% that could be a little higher around 145. Uh, but uh, if you go and look at the larger time frame, um, you know, this 140 area looks very interesting, uh, particularly, you know, you've got a trend line against the highs here, one, two, three, uh, that could come in around that area as well. Uh, so, and, you know, not to mention a retest of the highs of the, of the month. Uh, and of course, you know, prior highs here from 142 from from May. Uh, I got a hunch that we're heading up in that direction uh, after um, after finding a low. Uh, we're now seeing short covering in the bonds, the risk off mentality, uh, which today did not align too well with our S&P. Uh, the E-mini S&P actually rallied pretty hard off of its lows of the day, recovering, you know, now at this point, 48 points. It was up much more. Um, I am uh, I am watching this chart closely to see what will happen at this 39.50 low to the 37.41 um, uh, low, or high to low, the 50% level around uh, 38.45, mainly because the last, the next in the series short here from 4,200 down to 3,600 traded at 3,900. The they filled that gap at 3,900, uh, and the downside target here is towards 3,505, which when you step out to the daily chart, and we've talked about this before, from the uh, Millennials Black Monday, that low we formed uh, back in March of 2020, through the new highs at 4,800, that's a full 50% swing right into the 3,500 handle. So um, not calling that that will be a bottom, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven swings down into 3,500 might be the magic number and we could watch stocks bottom here just before a recession an economic recession begins if that occurs alongside another rate hike even just a half basis point um not even you know 75 basis points um Maybe just a half basis point would be enough to probably drag the market down a little further. Uh, the Fed will back themselves into a wall uh, and into a, a corner where they may need to now swing the pendulum the other way into more quant, you know, a more dovish uh, Fed and, um, and and be supporting these markets a little bit more. This all is interestingly it comes around the time that uh, you know Jackson Hole meetings will be going on in a month or so, uh, and you know that's where the Fed kind of sits down. Uh, sips the whiskey and discusses what they're going to do with the world uh, for the following year. Um, so watch for that, you know, with the idea that equity indices often bottom before the economic recession hits. So before you, before the TV acknowledges the recessions going on, you'll usually find a bottom in those, um, in the equity indices. Um, so that covers just about everything here today. Um, that I wanted to talk about. Remember, if you've ever got questions or you want to see something covered in this, um, shoot me an email, uh, dhussey at zaner.com. Find me on uh, Facebook or Twitter, or give me a call at 312-277-0110. Uh, I love uh, hearing from you guys. I want to, of course, make this more of what you want uh, in a program and in the Strategy of the Week webinar. Um, and uh, obviously it's you know geared towards uh, agricultural uh, futures uh, first and foremost and hedging those products. And then you know we take a look at just about everything because everything's affecting everything else uh, these days. And, and I think that that is... Uh, uh, that's not something, uh, you know, to totally ignore. Um, 
and of course, uh, before I let everyone go, uh, I do want to, and I, you know, meant to kind of show this before. Uh, well, I can't do it now. I'll be doing another video on our farm view app, uh, but check out the links in the, um, to, to a quick, uh, you know, a quick video on that that I have in the, um, that'll be in the comment section, certainly in the uh, other section here. Um, a new app that we developed over here at Zaner to help uh, with marketing on the farm. With all that being said, everybody, have a great day. Have a happy 4th of July weekend. Stay safe out there and uh, we will be back with you as price action develops. Take care, everyone.